I would get four leads a year from Google, maybe. And now I get four per week. I can see the whole wide world with these two eyes. And I can be whoever I want to be, because it's my life. So when you started this, as opposed to before you had it, what jump in net revenue did you show? What jump in net revenue? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to tell you my revenue number no, today, just, but I'm going to tell you, yeah. Give me a percentage. We get about uh, four leads per week from Google. And four leads per week for an accounting firm is good because they're lifetime clients. I have a cap of 100 clients to give you kind of the idea. Like I can only, the, the nature of the work where we do, because we do plan, financial planning and business planning and the corporate work for the client, that I can really only handle 100 households. And I get four leads per week from Google. Um, and how was that compared to before you did the YouTube stuff? Or did you, did you measure that kind of metric? I would get four leads a year from Google, maybe. And now I get four per week. So, it, you know, if I was, you know, I started out like you guys, that, that free page or that page on page eight, four leads a year, yeah. So you mentioned having worked with legal clients before. Uh -huh. Is there any issues that run up with like code of conduct and marketing and that kind of thing that you've run into? Uh, I'm not the expert on your code of conduct. You might want to, you know, think about do I have a disclosure on it, right? Um, you know, is, is this a, you know, not a, not a substitute for legal advice? Um, I would imagine your code of conduct are similar to ours, where I can't disparage another CPA. Um, if you're an undesignated accountant, I can just let her fly. But if you have your CPA. Uh, I, can't, I can't disparage you whether, whether I think you did a good job or not, right? Um, but in giving your advice, we have to be careful that somebody viewing it is, isn't seeing it as legal advice for their specific. Yeah, so you can put your disclosure on it. Right? But how would that really, like, do you have to do that as an accountant so they're not taking the advice? Because um, nobody, yeah. lawyers are already <coughs> kind of looked down upon. Then you throw a disclosure on there, then we're just kind of playing to the... Yeah. Yeah, you, you can. I've, I've heard some, you know, big names uh, lawyers on, uh, you know, podcasts and videos before, and they'll usually just start off that this isn't a substitute for, for, for legal advice. So, um, being in business is, you're going to have to take some risks sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, if you take zero risks of business, and this is something, you know, I, I'm always, you know, push people towards the middle of the risk spectrum, and some people are just, they're, don't want to take any risk, and some people they just take so many risks that you have to like dial them back down. You know, it, you're going to have to take some risks in all level of business if you want to scale. That that probably is a common denominator between all successful entrepreneurs that I work with. Now, some people take way too many risks. You know, maybe they're doing those videos about the disclosure, and they're just sitting there and they're they're disparaging a bunch of. Uh, you know, you could do it in in one way that's taking a lot of risk, but I think you could do it in another way that would mitigate your risks. Could you eliminate them? No, can't eliminate them. Right? Um, I don't think you can eliminate any risk. It's just how can you minimize them? Right? That would be your guys's, uh, your dis your discretion. Right? Um, any other questions on the YouTube? Yeah. I have two questions. So you mentioned that it's best to have ten minutes or longer. Mm -hmm. Is that helps with the ranking mm -hmm. on YouTube? Okay. Yeah, ten minutes. Well, and there's something else that I'm going to show you that we're going to do with them that yeah. you can't do. Save it for a bit. You that's, can't do it unless you have 10 minutes. That just surprised me because I thought, like, for me, I'm like, oh, that video is 10 minutes. I'm not going to watch it. You're not going to watch it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, I'll watch the two minutes. And I've read all those stats too. And if you look at Spurl and Associates business plans, I'm not going to be a hypocrite from three or four years ago. They're going to say, do 60 second videos. Right. Do 60 second videos, do 60 second videos. And then I found the guys who were doing it and I was like, oh my God, they're so much better than me. Like, I, I, I just saw what they're doing. And you're going to see it and it's okay. going to make sense. And um, sorry, just another quick question. I saw you, you found a hashtag on here, Ask Spurrell. Um, do you find that helps? Are there stats for that, that the hashtag on different platforms no. is getting much for you? No, I, I, I'm not doing this to be a YouTube star. I have 35 subscribers, which is like 33 more than I would ever thought I would get. <laughs> doing it to rank in Google. And then I'll show you. Um, and I would encourage you that, like I said, that weekly threshold is what you should go for. And rather than make them better, get to daily first. You want to, like, if you can get to daily, go ahead, knock yourself out and spend time making them better. But I would think most people, what they're going to do is, I'm telling everybody in the room to do this, 
and I can pretty much guarantee that it's going to be very lucky if one of you does it. <laughs> How much time does it take? For oh yeah. This? There you go. So if you and, and we, that's an excellent question. So we've wrestled with a couple of different uh, strategies. I've tried scripting them. Takes forever. Looks mechanical. Um, I've tried talking myself. Very difficult. And I've tried, uh, what we've settled on is we essentially write out 10 questions. So we write out 10 questions. And someone prompts me with those questions, Cole or Yahweh, they prompt me with the questions, and I can talk for 10 minutes. You guys are all experts. You can talk. I mean, how long do your client meetings go? They go longer than 10 minutes, right? All you need is someone to ask you questions, and you can keep going, uh, if you're anything like me. But if you have to talk by 10 minutes by yourself, that, some people can do it, I can't. It's harder. It, it, it's harder just to talk 10 minutes by yourself in the camera. So I would suggest you write out a topic, 10 questions on that topic, another topic, 10 questions on that topic. And we, I've experimented with what it's like to edit these. Doing one and then one and then one is slow. I write seven outlines and then I film seven. One after the other, after the other, after the other. You have the outlines, you just go. You just talk to you, can't talk no more. And you're kind of two hours of filming and then you're done your seven. Um, that's probably, that's the quickest way that I've found it. I think you, if you probably write a hundred outlines, you'll probably forget what the heck you wanted to say on it. But if you write, you know, seven over the course of a week, or, you know, you can probably remember where your head was at in that. And more quality at a decent quantity is going to be better than uh, a high quality only once. There's so much noise, it just won't work, okay? Um, so are you saying that if you're on YouTube, it helps your Google ranking? Is, is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Google will will favor people who post on YouTube because they own YouTube and they want to make the ad dollars mm -hmm. on YouTube. Um, yeah. Can you explain that a little bit more, what you're saying about, so you, you, you record seven, like we're talking about seven videos uh -huh. that you're gonna then use for the next seven weeks? Kind of yeah, thing? yeah. So uh, I basically, I, I found it difficult to sit there and write seven outlines at one time. Um, but I can write outlines, you know, one or two outlines a day. Right. And then get to a filming point and film them all. Because, you know, if you guys are anything like me, you're working on a file, maybe you're working on uh, child custody. And then the next time you're working on spousal support. So don't reinvent the wheel, just write seven questions on the, you know, the topic that you're working on that day. And you don't have to switch gears mentally. But trying to find seven different topics, Maybe you can do it. I, I've just struggled with it, right? And then do you use a, a, an agent to push your media content out at specified times? No. You don't have to pay for that. No. Not that useful. I mean, if you're trying to be an all-star in social media. Like Twitter and LinkedIn and all of those posts. Yeah. I, I view Twitter and, and LinkedIn as, as an ancillary marketing aspect. No, no. I mean the, the engine behind that so that it pushes out to all of your various media and uh, no, I'm not using it. Okay. Yeah, I'm not using it. It's not to say that it's wrong. It's just saying I would do what I'm doing first, and anything you want to do, make sure you're doing it in addition to what I'm doing. Or if it's taking you too much time, just cut that out. And I, I've just made those foundational meshes, which which is the the least cost and the the you know biggest bang for your buck in terms of hours you got to invest in that. Okay. So you were just saying that you would do seven. Seven is kind of like your critical mass once you got it. The material for seven of these videos. You'll yeah. sit down, record seven, take you a couple hours, and then move on with your life. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's exactly how I'm doing. And that's that took me a while to get there. I did one. I did one. And I was like, oh, let's do two. <laughs> I did two, and then I did four. Right? And I'm like, now I'm going to do seven. And it's it's not easy. Um, but I've been around guys who do uh, like big name, you know, YouTube and podcasts, and it can be done. Um, some of their schedules they work are intense. Uh, I shadowed a guy once who has a big name podcast, and he's 3.30 in the morning. But he gets as much work as he wants. <laughs> um, it's incredible. But uh, So I don't think everyone has to go there. I think weekly is that threshold where you can run a, a good business. I think if you can do a daily one, you are, you know, you're going for, to be the number one guy in Edmonton. If you can do that for any sort of length of period of time. Do it for a day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, if you could do 365 days in a year, that's it's like a superpower. You know, you're like Spider-Man type of thing. Um, that's not much to say. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, so let's move on to the next one here. I want to get through this for you guys. Um, and then we talk about what we have that. Now we're going to do our vision. So what is the problem, vision, and mission of the business? You really want to establish what your problem, vision, mission, and business. You know, what are you solving? What's that problem you're solving for people? What is the vision? So the vision is something that you can, it's a long-term goal that you can count. You know, for example, the vision at Sperlin Associates is to help a thousand businesses